Good morning everybody, welcome to the weekend, welcome back to the channel. Thank you to all the new subscribers and uh, thank you for all of the people who have been commenting my videos, had some really good feedback recently. So what's this video about? Well, a very, very quick update to let you know where things are at and some ideas I've been thinking about and keen to get some comments back. So update on the engine. So obviously we're in a process of trying to strip it down. One of the things we're trying to get off now is the crank pulley or the uh, vibration damp the dampener. Um, now, one of the things I was thinking about, I've got obviously the engine I'm building and the engine that's in the car. And one of the discussion points that I've seen recently was, do you stay with the OEM dampener? Do you go to something like a ATI super damper? Or some people go to an oversized solid crank pulley. Been a lot of discussions and I was considering maybe what I do is do one engine with one and then you know with the solid one and one with the dampener. However I also saw a post this morning, very good one, and we, I think that was on the R53 Owners Club, but um, and a, a person who has been running a solid dampener, uh, a solid crank pulley, and has now pulled apart his oil pump to find that it's it's completely shattered and broken apart. And this is kind of one of the things, um, topic of discussion I guess is, is a key. I, Personally, I have no experience, I have uh, no idea, but some interesting conversations and responses around this, around, you know, if you put the, you've got the dampener at one end, but you've also got the dual mass flywheel at the other end, and uh, if people are changing out the flywheel, then there's vibrations that are going to be taken up somewhere else, um, and then if you, just, you know, put a solid crank pull at the other end, then, you know, all the vibrations are now being taken, you know, either through the accessories or through the oil pump. So it's an interesting topic. I'm, I'm no expert, so I'm not going to say anything. The other th interesting point that was raised uh, by someone was that, you know, the W11 engine was built, obviously, by some very clever engineers. And, you know, they were trying to make the engine as cheap as possible because it's gone into some fairly, you know, cheaper cars, I guess, at the end of the day. So if they could get away with saving some money by, say for example, putting in a, a fixed crank pulley, then maybe they would have done that. But they've obviously put in this other one for a reason. Now, that's, with all of this discussion, I thought I kind of had this plan of going forward of, you know, doing, as I said, one fixed, one not. But now I'm thinking, eh, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do something else. But anyway, it uh, be interesting to hear your thoughts on, on that. Um, I've also seen, and just sort of to sit, fit, level up both sides of the fence, really, um, I've seen plenty of people talk about having fitted a fixed a crank pulley and running their car for, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles um, and not having a problem. So, you know, who knows? A jury's out on it. I think, you know, some people will, some people may not. And... I guess maybe depending on how you're using the car and what you're using the car for could make a difference. You know, if you're using it in for purely a track car, then, you know, maybe the engine's coming out every few years and being rebuilt anyway, and, uh, you know, maybe it's not a problem. But lots of information. So what do I do? I'm not sure, <laughs> to be fair. Because I'm not turning my car into a track car per se, could it be used on the track? Probably but it's not going to be a track focused car and so maybe I'll go down the, um, the either the OEM road get a, a new OEM one or uh, the other option is to go to the ATI super damper uh, I know there are probably other dampers out there um, I haven't done a lot of research on it yet but uh, anyway again put your, put your thoughts in the comments below what we do want to do going forward with the engine though, um, so the other thing was, thank you very much for the comments, I've had two people come back on uh, removing the, the crank pulley. So the first one was, what about your Ugga gun? Good point, do have one. Now suggestion, now the person who suggested it, and I really should have the names here, shouldn't I? It would be nice to give a shout out to those who have um, commented. Had a DeWalt, um, I think, what have I got? access to uh, it's not a DeWalt um, but it's something we can give it a, give a try the other thing is obviously at some point I will be probably changing and pulling out the uh, the, the chain uh, the timing chain and for that you need the locking toolkit which of course if we put the locking toolkit in should also help stop things moving around and because obviously you lock the cam on the chain it's going to lock the crank in place so 
can't think why I didn't think of those ideas, but you know, there you go, you have those moments. So thank you very much for those comments. Um, obviously I will be buying a timing chain locking kit. So at some point we'll, we'll get that on, but we'll, we'll try the Agadugga just in, you know, just to start with. Um, what will happen next with the engine? So once we've got that off, um, and I'm not sure quite when I'll be up there. I'm hoping maybe to sneak up there this weekend, but a lot on. Um, so I could try the Agadugga gun for now, but um, it may be at least another week before I've uh, sorted out the um, the crank locking kit. So we'll see where we go with that. Uh, obviously the next thing is also to pull off the sump and uh, have a look underneath and um, have a good look at the engine, see what, um, see if there's any thing that's loose or you know anything that requires me to pull the engine completely apart um, fingers crossed it's it's not in too bad condition and um, we'll see where we go so th certainly plan is I think we'll buy a, a cam for it we'll put a, a replacement cam in it we'll do the timing chain for sure obviously all of the the guides and the, sorry so all of the oil seals and you know we'll see if there's anything more we want to do f uh, with the engine from there certainly clean it up and give it a paint and make it look clean and tidy uh, and then all the ancillaries will obviously get tidied up so that was that and the other thing is a big thing i've had a couple of people and one specifically recently asked me another question which was back on um, the suspension and everything that was done underneath the car so I know I did a summary video, but I didn't really talk about the costs involved, which I can certainly go through. Uh, I'll have to go back and dig all that stuff out. So I have been asked to have a look at that again, but not, not just having a look at what I did and the costs, but also um, the question was, how have I found the car? Which is a very good question, a very good question. And I won't delve into it now but we'll certainly make that um, the next video I think. I'm gonna sort of have to dig through and find out some of the costs. I may not pull all of them out but I'll certainly give you a good idea. I know I went through buying what I thought I needed and then you know you get to a point and something something changes so you very I need this now as well. Um, so I think I can sort of segment into saying, you know, if you want to just achieve this, you could probably do it for this amount of money. If you want to take it a step further, you could do this. And then, you know, I kind of went a little bit further and, and did a few other bits and pieces as well at the same time. And there are a number of parts I bought thinking this is what I'd need, and then I end up changing. So I've got a whole bunch of spare parts um, that, you know, we'll see what happens with those. Maybe I'll sell them, who knows? Maybe um, I'll have another car or maybe someone will want me to do some of their work for them and I've got bits that I can use in that, um, uh, in that situation. So we'll try and get that video out as well as soon as possible, but I'll, I'll delve into that over the next um, couple of weeks, try and get all of the information together and get that out. So just uh, a quick message to let you know, I'm going to work on it and I will release that in a future episode. So like we will say, hit the subscribe button uh, so you make sure you don't miss that one. The... The other thing is still the interior of the car. So we got the stereo in, it's in working. Um, there's a couple of things that are still not complete in the back of the car. And uh, so I need to get on and do those as well. Um, time, right? Where Where is the time to do all these things? So there was the little cubby holes in the back. Um, I haven't quite finished those. The little clips, I did try and buy some springs to help lift up the the little cubby, the lids, so we could get them open. It's not really working, so I'm trying something else. There's little, um, I've ordered up some little knobs, the little push-in knobs that them um, pop in uh, and out so they're not sticking out all the time. Uh, and we're gonna give that a try. Um, I also need to put the locking components in, which I was hoping to do the other weekend, but ran out of time. And the other big thing I need to worry about is putting some sort of panelling back on the sides. The I think there was, in one, a, a previous video when we were talking about that, we had the, um, the side brackets for the front seats. Uh, sorry, the front seats. Sorry. The side brackets where the rear seats clip into and also where the rear seat uh, safety belts were attached. There was a vote around do I take them out do I leave them in it was pretty even to be fair and so I've had a look at it and I'm thinking my view is I'm going to take them out uh, so it's another thing that's uh, that's going to be done at some point but again finding the time to do it but I want to get those out get the old plastic in there uh, to roughly measure it up cut it down a bit and then see what we can do to sort of smooth something out and um, get some covers back on there and some hide some of the some of the 
less pleasant bits of the car. So lots to do, uh, lots to think about, and somehow I've got to find a time to do all this stuff. But uh, again, thank you very much for, for watching the videos. Thank you very, very much for all the comments. Really appreciate the feedback. Um, and yeah, hope you have a great weekend. And as I said, the short video, see you next time. Take care for now. Bye-bye.